Good morning to all of you. Welcome back to the Namaste experience. You can hear what's happening where we sit here in Mexico. It is raining very hard. Divine water and nourishment is raining down all around us, which is true, of course, every moment. Divine radiance and love and nourishment is raining down all around us every moment. All we need to do is to open to receive. I could go out, we could all go out right now and let's do it. Let's go just stand in the rain. <laughs> and get all wet. We'll just turn the camera around. You got you can all watch us. <laughs> or not. <laughs> It might be better just to sit here and just to feel and to acknowledge just how beautiful this gift is. So I hope that all of you can still hear me and we can all be here together, staying dry, knowing that the rain is all around us. So today's daily word is divine. This is divine. And it says, I am divine. I am divine. We just sang those words for the last few moments just to open up even wider to that divinity that is moving through and as us every moment. So as you know, every day, right before session, I, I go into my little cave and I just allow that divine spark to start moving through me after I hear the daily word. So let's see if we can move into this expression of our divinity. No truer statement could be made, could you make, and no higher realization could enter your mind than the statement, I am divine. Say that with me. I, I am, am divine. divine. There's no truer statement you could ever make. No truer statement you could ever make or acknowledge. It is the same as claiming that you are one with your source, now and forever. Or identical with the love that created and claims you still. Identical with the love that, I, that created and claims you still. But to claim this reality with your whole being, this you have still refused to claim it with your whole being, without reservation, uncompromising in every way. The thought of loss still lingers in your mind. And though it is impossible to lose anything that reality forever claims, a sliver of doubt still haunts you. The thought or the idea that something could ever be lost that is true. That sliver of doubt still rests in the mind. But the statement, I am divine, washes that away completely. Just like the rain washes away anything, any of the debris, any of the dirt, anything that is not holding us clean in the spirit of truth. It's all washed away in the statement, I am divine. But the truth is forever true and will never be replaced by the illusion of separation or sin. Your divinity waits not upon your recognition. Your divinity waits not upon your recognition. And your recognition waits only upon your extension. Your recognition of your divinity waits only upon your willingness to extend that, to give it away, to offer it to everyone. Give to everyone what is being offered to you now and forever. And you will see how the divine current of love was never compromised. The divine current of love was never compromised. Can you interrupt? the air that you breathe by holding your breath? Of course not. You can deprive yourself of oxygen, but you cannot determine its existence. 
And neither can you determine or deny your own divine existence by refusing to see what is so clearly seen by God. All we can do is surrender into that divinity. And of course, to give it away, to see it everywhere. You've been told that the world defines who you are and that the limitations you see all around you reflect your own. That's what we've been told by the world every step we take, everywhere we go. Now, are you given a new way to perceive the truth by rejecting any thought or assertion of limitation or lack? Rejecting any thought or assertion of limitation or lack and realize that your divinity could never be compromised. As always, it is through giving this gift that it is received. So, make a resolute decision today to see what is so clearly seen. If you realize how much effort it takes to see against reality, to see what is not there, if you realize how much effort that takes, you would never do it again. So do not block the flow of divine grace as it moves through and as you every moment. Only then will you fully accept that you are divine and God's love is forever your own. So just like what's happening outside here on the street. I've mentioned this before, that when it rains like this here in Ahihi, all the streets slant down toward the lake. So all of this rain now is pouring down these streets like rivers. And it's removing everything that you don't need. All the debris that clouds our minds, that can, tries to convince us that I am not divine, I am not holy. All we need to do is to allow that water, that flow, that river to take us. If we wanted to right now, we could go out to Cologne and we could get into like a little sled or a little boat. We could just slide all the way to the lake. And that would be fun. Or we could just sit here and we could just breathe in this holy air listen to the sound of this sacred rain and remember just how gentle the reality of our divinity really is. So Vicki, I'm going to mute myself so everybody can hear you clearly and we're going to let you take it from here. So go right ahead. Welcome. Thank you, James. And I see Calico is back. So we'll give Calico time too. But um, Oh, the rain is such a good way of experiencing relaxing, letting go, resting, and letting. Letting the rain wash everything away. So when I was reading it this morning, the daily word on uh, our divinity, what is it when we surrender? And I was watching myself. What does happen in our minds when we say and then experience that word surrender. And what I find I'm surrendering is just my idea of a good outcome, no matter what a situation might be, even the day I'm in something simple. And it's, it's so I was seeing it kind of like a camera lens. When you have a camera, you have to open the lens so you can see the present situation around you and capture it if you want on a picture. <clears throat> and I was seeing how my mind, when it holds to some idea that rain is good, rain is bad, I'll, I'll do this, I'll do that. Any of those ideas, my ideas of what I think is good for me, when I hold on to those, my, my lens of my camera is shut down. It's blocked with my idea. And when I open it and I catch what's already around me, which is divinity, which I'm part of, which everything is part of, and now I want to catch it, 
all I have to do to surrender is just drop those ideas, whatever they are. I, I won't have those ideas. I'm going to just have my camera lens open and catch this, the expression and the joy of the divinity that I'm swimming in already. I don't know how it'll show up, but it will show up because it's the only thing that's there. I remember as a kid, they would say, oh, you know, you know, God is omniscient, omnipresent, omni this, omni that. And I'm thinking, how can you think God's omni everything and think he's, you're not part of that? It's like, what happened? How could we not be part of omni everything, omnipresent, omniscient, om, omni love, where God is the everything. And we would have to be part of that. It would be, I remember thinking as a kid, these poor nuns, they really don't understand that yet, but they will. And I always felt Jesus in my heart saying, don't worry, everyone will. That's the best they know. Love them because they love me and don't worry about it. And so I never did. And I realized every day more and more that allness of God, I just want to be open to it. And as soon as I have some idea, or I'll do this today or that today. I, I want to let it go and find out with my lens open, what is divinity reflecting back to me or showing me or offering me so that I may give it. And it may be a day different than what I'm thinking of in the morning. It may not be. But my job in surrendering is to keep my lens open and say, let love flow through me in any way that it pleases. I'm open to receive and I'll and I'll share it. That's what we do. When we give, we just share the love that we are one way or the other. So um, I was also thinking the same thing. As soon as we're thinking, that's when the lens shuts down. So I was looking again at the idea of, oh, when we pray for one another, when we pray for one another, we usually have some idea of an outcome in mind or some goal. And that's a piece to surrender. So it's all about surrendering our ideas of things without making it torturous. Just, I don't know, I will join with you in what's true prayer in the recognition that we share our divinity. That's true prayer. I recognize that we are one in God's love, that we are part of that. I see it. I, I allow that to come in. I keep my lens open to capture that that allness, that everything of divinity, which is just what love is. And then we become like a fount unto our world because now we're that open lens which divinity is expressing through because we're open to it. Everybody can be, not many want to. When we choose to, to keep our own thinking and loop it and keep trying to well, justify it or make it reasonable or this or that. We're just keeping our lens shut. And all we have to do is, who knows? I don't know. Let it be. Let's find out what divinity has in mind. What would love to do about all this? Then we become, become that fount of grace and of blessing to our whole world. Jesus says we're here to save the world. We're here to save the world we've been projecting and allow it to become an expression of what is already there. And when any one of us do it in our world, wherever we are, we literally become the lighthouse, the light of the world. And our divinity is all that we're letting in. And it's everybody's divinity, so everybody wins. There's no loss and surrender. There's only the acceptance of the everything. So that's probably enough for me to Thank you, Vicki. Wow. You know, something I was remembering as you were sharing, a teaching that we haven't spoken of in a while, but which is so appropriate to this theme, if you remember this. I don't know. Maybe I love you. So whatever is happening, I mean, the rain is pouring down there were probably times in our life where we thought that was interrupting something or something that wasn't desired. But I don't know. I mean, maybe all I know is that I love you. And that's all I need to know. That's all I need to do. That's all I need to experience is that love. 
And then don't judge anything. You know, the rain, the troubles, or the difficulties that we're encountering. Don't judge it. Like Dickie, you talked about the lens. Just keep that lens open. Choose to see everything through that divine lens, and then you'll realize that there's never an interruption. There's never a challenge that is not leading us straight into divine grace. So I am told that Calico is back. So Calico, if you're there, why don't you take it from here and you can share a little bit yourself. I'd love to. I tell you, I, I just spent an absolutely beautiful week. It's only about four minutes from Namaste at um, a, a house on the lake with a pool and a beautiful view. And you know what it was for me, I was having a looping shadow come up in my mind. And this is where I don't see how I love. I see where I'm not loving. And that's my key to go much, much deeper because I haven't cleared it. And it's something that definitely needs to be cleared with Holy Spirit. So I went on this week long, there was a lot of silence. It was a, with a friend of mine, a lot of silence and just, you know, pops of clearing. And um, the, the reason I went there, the shadow that I went there cleared very quickly, but was what was really there was this guidance on this next project that I would uh, do with Holy Spirit. And Suzanne came up with it the same time I did. She's going to produce me, and it's basically going to be looking at a life well lived by looking into the shadow. And it's I'm going to clear everything that's come up that I have a memory of that has been cleared through A Course in Miracles with some, some little piece of Course in Miracles. So it's going to combine A Course in Miracles. It's going to combine a lot of my parables. I have some great parables. And it's it's just how to clear them, because, again, you know, most of my parables did not st start out as, oh, this is great. They were usually very dark and very hard and harsh. And it was like only by going into deep prayer and silence and hearing guidance was I able to really clear them. So I must say, if you're if you've never given yourself the gift of silence, do that, because the divinity comes through to clear whatever's blocking it. And that's and that's the shadow. And I must say, I've learned so much from my shadows. I'm very grateful for my shadows. And um, they're all clearing, they're going very quickly. So anyway, hi everybody. <laughs> and now back to the Thank you. Bodhi wanted to say hello to everyone. <laughs> you wanna say something, Bodhi? We all need some loving and some attention when the rain pours down and we forget just how easy this really is. So, Scott, why don't you come up and you can, I'm sure there's something that's moving through you about rain and water and whatever you want to share. Take us home. Okay, so th this is going to be a sing-along, and your job is to say the words, or sing the words, I am divine. Do it at your own volume, but my hope is that we do it loudly. I'd love to hear, like, the whole neighborhood hear us on the I am divine. What is the one thought to keep in our mind, remembering? How do we stop the passage of time by remembering? Quickly a 
unwind from our minds by remembering I am divine. How can we consistently get mighty fine by remembering I am divine? Enjoy the rain, turn water to wine by remembering I am divine. We're remembering I am divine. We're remembering I am divine. <laughs> yeah, that's all it is, just remembering I am divine. And of course, seeing that everywhere, no matter what. Give this gift away today. And then the rain that pours into our life is seen as a nourishment, not an obstacle. And to this we say, Amen, 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 Ipoto. Have an amazing day. Enjoy the rain in your life. Bye-bye. Namaste. Bye-bye.